Hello, this is Professor Dan Kernler of Elgin Community College, back with another video in my statistics series. In this one, we talk about how to determine if two qualitative variables are independent. Let's get to it. In this video, we're going to investigate our discipline data again, and we're going to try to determine if there's a relationship between race or ethnicity of the student and whether or not they received a discipline referral. Now, we've already talked about this data before. Uh, if you pull up the relative um, distribution here about what proportion received a discipline, we can see that the black um, and the Hispanic Latinx students pop out at you. They have much higher discipline rates than the other groups. Um, but how can we be more specific and really know um, statistically, is there a relationship between race or ethnicity of the student and the discipline rate of that student? So here are the counts. And then the question might be, well, what would the counts be if these two variables were independent? And how would the actual counts differ from those expected counts if they were independent? Well, if they were independent and we were to randomly select a student from this data set, the probability that that student would be of two or more race or ethnicities and not have a discipline referral would be the product of the probability that they were two or more times the probability that they did not have a referral. That's the independence probability. Remember, when they're independent, you can multiply their probabilities together. Uh, in this case, that should be 405 out of 12, 658. That's the probability that a randomly selected student is of two or more race or ethnicities. And then the probability of not having a discipline referral, 8381 over that 12, 658. Now, what we would expect then, if they were independent, you take the total and you'd multiply by the probability of being two or more and no. That would be the expected count. Let's put in those numbers. Um, you can see here that the 12658, there's actually a bunch of these and you can simplify to get 405 times 8381 over 12658. Now those numbers come from the table. In fact, the 405 is the row total for two or more. The 8381 is the column total for no. And then of course the 12658 is the total overall. So if we generalize that, the expected count for any one cell is the total for that row times the total for that column over the overall total, 12,658 in this case. Let's bring that formula up above me here and let's compute some expecteds for each of these cells. So we were talking about this first cell, that's the 405 times 8381 over 12,658. That was the row total, 405 times 8381 was the column total times 12,658 was the overall total. And so you get 26 268.2. That's the expected number of in students in that cell if they were independent, if these two variables were independent. Kind of moving over to the right, we take the row total, 405 again, column total, 4277, the overall total, and we get uh, 136.8. We can do the same for all the other cells. We can compute row total times column total over the overall total, and we get all of these expected counts. Um, before you panic, we are gonna learn how to do all these in StatCrunch, but like usual, I want you to know where they come from. So now to our hypothesis test. We wanted to find a null and alternative hypothesis. In this case, the null hypothesis is that the two variables are independent. We're gonna assume independence until proven otherwise. So our alternative claim then is that they are dependent, that race or ethnicity and the discipline rate um, are dependent. Our level of significance, we'll use our standard alpha equal 0.05, but now we're kind of stuck. We need a test statistic. So here's the test for independence. If we have O sub I represent the actual observed counts and E sub I be the expected counts, then we get this new statistic called a chi-squared test statistic. And it'll follow the chi-squared distribution. Um, and the degrees of freedom is a little funky. You take one, you take the rows, the number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one, multiply those together. That gets you the degrees of freedom. Um, there are some criteria here. All the expected frequencies have to be at least one, and you can't have more than 20% of the expected frequencies be less than five. If those are violated, what you can do is you can combine categories together. Um, that's not gonna be necessary for ours because all of our expecteds were very large, but if you need to, you can combine them together uh, to get 
those criteria met, where the expecteds are all at least one and no more than 20% of them are less than five. So let's take that test statistic and compute it for ours here. Let me do some rearranging, kind of make some more space for those. So the first one here, the observed is 266, the expected 268.2. We subtract those, square it, and divide by the expected. Same thing, kind of move through here. I'm not going to put them all up here, don't have space. We get a total chi-squared of 773. That's going to be our test statistic. So again, our test statistic for this test for independence is a chi-squared, and let's talk about how to do this in StatCrunch. You've actually already done this, but you probably didn't realize it. We wanna do a contingency table. So we go to Stat, Tables, Contingency, we have With Data, and let's choose Race or Ethnicity as the rows and Discipline as the columns, though it doesn't matter, you can switch those up, it doesn't matter which one you choose as which. Uh, and then you can see down below there is the chi-squared test for independence. And you can hit Compute, and there is our 773 again. So our test statistic, 773, the p-value less than 0 0.0001, less than one ten thousandth. So clearly here we're going to reject the null hypothesis. That means there is enough evidence to support our claim that the race or ethnicity and whether they received a discipline referral are dependent. And we, we kind of already knew that, right? Because we already had that graph. We can see that those bars are not the same for all the different groups. And, and especially these two groups where it jumps out at you that the discipline rate is much higher than the other groups. Now there's a couple other things you can see in the stack crunch. You can see the expected counts. You can also see the chi-squared contribution. What that means is which of these cells contributed the most to that chi-squared value. So for example, this one under black and yes, there's a chi-squared contribution there of 154.8. If you go back to the original ones, you can see that the observed yes here are much higher than what we would expect. Uh, the other one that's high, it's the Asian 151.1. That one, it's the other direction where the observed yes is actually much lower. Now you end up squaring that difference and then dividing by the expected. So it ends up being a positive for the chi-squared. But again, sometimes that chi-squared contribution lets you see which groups maybe are the furthest from what we would expect. And that is it for this video. I hope this helped you understand the chi-squared test for independence. Uh, if you're interested in seeing more, you can subscribe, hit the bell to get notified. As always, thank you to the Elgin Community College Board of Trustees for approving my sabbatical during the spring 2021 semester. That's how I had time to record these videos and upload them for you. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.